Hello, everyone. Hey, hey, Mr. Mr. Hey, Mr. 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 So this is a class now for period R and period four. All right. Um, we're missing today, so we're going to try to like do a twofer, as it were. Okay. Um, kill two birds with one stone. This is my plan in the future is actually just teach one class a day and then go home. Uh, but anyway, here's the thing. Homework. Let's all get our assigned books out first. All right. Uh, today you guys read chapters 60 and 61. We had one sort of technical chapter and one action chapter, right? Oh, yeah. We had a, a chapter about the line, how that works in a whale uh, boat. And then we had a chapter where we see the line in action um, helping to kill uh, a sperm whale. So this weekend, I have three chapters I want you to read, okay? They are the following. Uh, chapter 64, 67, and 68. Now let me say a word or two about these chapters, all right? So 64, okay, Eduardo, thank you. 64 follows 61 very nicely. What is 61 called? Stub? Kill the whale. Kill the whale. This one's called Sperm. Stub's Supper. Supper. You'll see stub, stub is determined to do a kind of cannibalish thing, which is to like eat the thing he just killed. He really wants to eat some whale. So this is a because like cannibals traditionally don't just like eat people because they're hungry. They eat their prey. They eat their enemy. They eat the people they conquer. Are you with me? So uh, this is a great chapter. It's very amusing, um, and it's actually one of those things where you'll see that there's some hidden depths there, a little lower layer, as it were. Hmm? Okay, sixty-seven. And 68 are also excellent chapters. Um, they are totally technical. Because now what do we have next to our ship, do you suppose? We have a dead, big, dead whale. So the next question I'm assuming all of you would have, yeah, Spencer did the other day, like, well, now what? Like, what do we do now? We're not going home for three more years. What are we going to do with this giant carcass? Well, these two chapters are called Cutting In and The Blanket. And this is about how you process the whale. Because essentially, like, what do we want from the whale? The blood whale. It's just blood blood blood. Which, we, which, which is going to turn into oil. So this is about how to do the first next step. You with me? So cutting in in the blanket. So read these carefully. Again, if you were paying attention yesterday, James, and you too. Hey, I'm looking at someone in tier four right now. I know who I am. Oh, I see what that um, is. If you were paying attention yesterday, you remember I introduced this narrative little tactic, right? Where he'll explain something, yes? Yeah. Look at something very concrete, invisible, and then turn it into kind of an opportunity for a philosophical reflection, yes? Well, believe me, these two chapters in particular, you're going to see a lot of that, right? Where he's, he's basically talking about the skin of the whale and the blubber of the whale, and that'll give him a lot of chance to, like, think some big thoughts, okay? All right, now. Um, hmm. Yes? No, quiz. Mr. Matson, it Sir, strikes quiz. me that you often assign papers that do the, ask students to do the very thing. Say more. Well, for instance, the uh, Enlightenment Maybe we do a little, little, little cut, too. The Enlightenment essay? Oh, hold on one second. Would you mind, uh, oh, can we get really? Mr. Mack on the, on the oh, camera? Mr. Mack. One more time. Uh, it seems to me that you assign papers that ask <laughs> students to do the very thing. For instance, uh, the Enlightenment essay. We went to Washington, D.C. You were supposed to describe some concrete, physical thing and then explain its significance. Oh. There you go. This novel is all about that very thing. You get practice at reading this novel, you'll be able to translate the skill into all sorts of parts of life. All right? Well said. Speaking of which, by the way, I have other great news for you you should write down. This is for you guys as well. Um, it's about your essays, which aren't really your essays, right? Just your skip chapter assignment. Uh, please, please, uh, please, no, no talking. We don't want to confuse people. All right, here's the deal. If you did, um, if your number is less than 90, less than or equal to 90, okay, then your due date is Friday. A week from today, okay? Got it? So if you're, you do chapter 90 or less, then your due date is Friday. If your the number of your chapter is uh, greater than 90, then your due date is Monday after the Friday. Uh, what's that Monday? Let me know the date off the top of your head. Um, so what will Friday? The 23rd. The, what's the 20th? The 23rd. Yeah. No, 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 that day. Monday. What, what's today? The 20th. That Monday is, uh, it's the Tuesday. Is that Monday? That'll be 27th. 
Okay, so that's the plan. So I encourage you guys to do some research. Look at those websites I, I introduced you to, right? The OED, Power Moby Dick, um, what was the other one? Oh, that Princeton Searchable Moby Dick that I showed you guys yesterday. And I would love to meet with you guys as well. Anybody wants to come and talk about your chapter? Um, to help me, uh, let me help you look, maybe get some little insights, and uh, we're all clear for that, all right? So let's do this. Um, I'm actually concerned that we're not going to get through these two chapters very easily, so I'm going to do the, I'm going to leave the recitations at the end of class, all right? All right, okay? Unless some one of you really want to jump up and do it right now. What about the quiz? Yeah, what about the quiz? You ready for a quiz? Yeah, I'm ready for a quiz. Okay, we're going to hear from Ethan Hennessy. He's going to come and... And re recite. All right. Evan, why don't you just uh, point it out, yep. Ethan? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. You're on the film, Ethan. All right, show them how it's done, Ethan. Shh, please. Parky yet together in a little lower layer. All visible objects matter. No, 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 no. One more time. Okay. Parky yet again in a little lower layer. All visible objects men are but as pasteboard mass. But in each event, in the living act, the undoubted deed. There is some unknown but still reasoning thing puts forth the molding of, moldings of its features from behind its unreasoning mass. If man shall strike, then strike through the mask. How can he? How can the prisoner reach that side except by thrusting through the wall? To me, the white whale is this wall shoved near to me. Sometimes I think there's naught beyond, but tis enough. He tasks me, he keeps me. I see in him outrageous strength. With an inscrutable mouse sinewing it, this inscrutable thing is chiefly what I hate most. And be the white whale. And be the white whale agent, or be the white whale principal. I shall wreck, wreak, wreak that hate upon him. Talk not to me of blasphemy man, for I'd strike the son if it insulted him. Okay, all right. Now let's do this. We're going to start. Evan, you, you, you got us here. Yeah. We're going to start um, here. Okay. So we're talking about chapter sixty and sixty-one. Okay. Sixty, the line. All right. Now the first thing I want to say is this. You guys need to remember uh, that little narrative uh, tech. Uh, tactic I've been talking about, this idea of moving from the literal to the figurative, right? The literal to the figurative. From the very concrete to the philosophical. This is something which really makes the novel more than simply uh, a, a great story, a great sea romance, right? And frankly, um, you should ask yourself, like, well, what actually is Ishmael most interested in anyway? You know what I mean? Like, in the end, is he interested in this little tale in concrete explanation? No. Or is he actually just using those as like a device to get to something like he's really interested in? Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, I, actually, I'm convinced, if you want to know the truth of the matter, as I said this the other day, that uh, Moby Dick is not really about the whale. And we talked about that, we know that. Yeah. But actually, I'm convinced actually that Moby Dick's not even about whaling. Oh. It's about the thing that Ishmael uh, is able to talk about by means of whaling. Whaling is just like a device. Now, I'll show you what I mean in the chapter called The Line. Um, so, what is the line? Someone just answer simply. What is the line that we're talking about? Go ahead, Eric. It's the rope used to uh, catch the whale. Say more. Do you lasso the whale? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? You harpoon the whale, so say more. Manila. Yeah, the is made out of Manila. It's made out of Manila. What's it attached to? The harpoon, right, yeah. on one end. Okay, you know, we're gonna get some details about how the line works, and uh, and then and then we're gonna move to like that other layer, the little lower layer, as it were. Okay. So actually, what I want to do is show you this a couple pictures right now. This is. I think I mentioned this place, Mystic Seaport. Did I mention that the other day or not? No. Yeah. So Mystic Seaport is a great. Uh, Historic town, like a little bit like you know, if you go to what is the one down in Virginia? Um, 
You go to Jamestown, yeah. well, yeah. Williams, 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 Williamsburg, where you can see like a little colonial town, yes? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to Connecticut, to Mystic, Connecticut, you can go to this uh, replica whaling village. It's cool. It's uh, pretty big. It's hundreds of acres, and they have, it's all along a lot of water side, and you can see them making ropes. You can see them making harpoons. They actually have that ship that they're lowering from, these guys, is the only still existing ship uh, from the whaling days called the Charles Morgan and uh, they actually just recently rebuilt it and sa sailed it up uh, to Newport this last summer but anyway uh, you can go there and, and some of the pictures I have here from a visit I took there shows how like how it works okay so you lower and away yes and we saw that and then you you paddle out after and there's another view of them them lowering but what I really want to show you guys is this picture here um, of hold on one minute it's coming it's coming those are all going to be important later um, this picture here of a whale boat, it's a really nice, like, uh, clear image. It's coming, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hold on. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves <laughs> for a minute. Yeah, I um, I hold on now, there we go. It's coming. We've got a lot of pictures of whaling. Just hold on. I know, I missed it somewhere. Come on, dog. <laughs> so there's a good picture. That's actually a kind of cool picture. You can see the, the size of the ship and the whale boat next to it. So hold on, it's coming. I'm almost there. Shh, quiet now. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I think it's coming. Why is it not here? I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go here. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize to you guys. Hold on. Wait, what did you do? You know that happens a lot when my jokes are kind of off, but my Aha, here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, okay, shh, please. All right, everybody look here, please. Uh, Julia, please pay attention. All right, so I don't know if you how well you can see this, but um, this will help us. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little drawing so you can kind of you can see um, what he's explaining, uh, and you can see the the um, diagram as well. All right, so this is an above view of a whale boat, right? And if you remember, how many guys are in a whale boat? Six. Six, six. is correct. Five. That's right, correct. So six. And so there's four oarsmen. Yes? And they'd be sitting, you know, like right here, it's their shoulders, right? And they'd have their, their oar out like that, and there'd be another guy right here, right? And he'd have his oar out like that. You guys following this? Yeah. yeah. And so on and so on. Uh, no, they would have one. They'd be holding it like with two, two hands on one oar, okay? So, out they'd go. And then if you remember, there's a guy in the back who's got a big steering oar, mm -hmm. right? A little like like a rudder, but it's actually a big oar. There's a guy back here, a big sweep, and then there's a guy in front who's who's that? The harpooner. Harpooner, right? Isn't the harpooner so, a row? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Remember, um, we talked. There's this weird weird incident you learn in chapter 61 how like the harpooner harpoons the guy, and then he switches places with uh, oh, yeah. the, the, the oh, yeah. first mate or the mate, and then the harp the mate actually kills the whale, right? Like, yeah. uh, and there's another chapter that explains that whole. Uh, scenario. So but anyway, I thought, I, thought the, I thought the squire is like with him, like handing him the and stuff. No, 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 no. He's he's out in the back row, uh, steering. All right. Now look, here's the part that matters to us in the chapter called the line, right? It's, it's two thirds of an inch. It's made of Manila, right? It's uh, so long. But here's the point he, he wants us to see is that it's in. It's okay. So you can see right there, right there. See it right there? That tub. Oh yeah. It's in a tub. And this is the rear uh, or the aft of the whale boat, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like it'll be right here, okay? And it'll, it'll be coiled up in there, yes? Yeah. Okay. And then one end, the 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 end would be free. It's not attached to anything, right? And then the end that uh, goes to the harpoon, he says, it goes back first. It goes back. And there's something here called a loggerhead, which is this guy right here. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. It's just like a little post that sticks up in the back, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the line goes in the back, and it go, wraps around there a couple times, and then it goes all the way across their hands, right, to the front, and then here is where it would be attached to a harpoon. So he throws it, and then what's one of the main points he wants to make about the line? It's like deadly. It goes it's deadly. It's super dangerous, right? Like this is something, and, and again, I think one of these things he's trying to get at is like, 
we didn't even know about this, right? Like, we, we don't know anything about whaling. We didn't know they had to stand on top of these big poles 100 feet off the water day in, day out. We didn't know that. We also didn't know, and of course we all know that whale's dangerous, but like, we had no idea, like, this line is so dangerous. So this is the one thing he said they have to be really, really careful when they do. They don't get they pulled over. Yeah, but what, what do they have to be careful uh, in doing and preparing? Uh, oh, packaging it. Or, like, putting yeah. it in yeah, the Yeah, boiling it. I don't know if you guys caught this, but one of the things he said is, a, a harpooner will spend like all day getting it in that tub, because when it comes out, it's coming out really fast. And what do they not want it to come out with? Like a knot. Yeah, like a knot or kinks. Mm -hmm. Because of course, here you guys all are, right? And it could wrap around your arm, right, and just pull you right overboard, yeah. right? Or neck, or it would uh, do you in, right? You can cut your neck off. Yeah. <laughs> So far, so good, right? So, do you guys feel like you understand the basic arrangement of the whale line on the whale boat? Yeah, so one of the points he makes is, this free, why is this end free? So it doesn't sink. Speak up, Tim. Is it because, like, nice and loud so the people at home can hear you. Is it because, like, if it's attached to the boat and it, like, gets the whale, like, it might capsize the boat? Okay, yeah, good. One reason it's not attached to this boat is that if the whale sounds, that it dives really quickly, It'll just pull your boat right in after it, right? Yeah. So that's one. What's the other reason it's free? So it can be attached to another boat. If or your wheel dives boat. down, 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 you and you're starting to run out of line, what are you going to do now? Another boat comes up next yeah. to you and attaches to that, right? They, yeah. they join their two eye splices, and then they take it. Like, who remembers this detail? Like, you pass around what? Grog. Grog. Vic, a mug of ale. He, that's pretty close, Wyatt. You know, just like the way you pass around a mug of ale, you basically pass the whale from one boat to another, right? If he dives down too far. Oh, so far, so good. You guys following this? Yes. All right. What other questions do you have about like the way this thing works? And then we're gonna get to the little lower layer in a minute. Go. Okay. So like, do they like pull the whale in once they harpoon it? Uh, well, we'll talk about like, that I, in chapter I, 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 sixty-one. I'll, 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 like, just like yeah, yeah, let's let's that's like uh, stub kills will. We'll talk about that in a minute. But how about just this arrangement of the line? Go. The no, Owen, loud. So the, he also mentioned the English boat has two tubs. Yeah. So you know he'll, he'll do this a lot of times, kind of demonstrate his knowledge about the whaling industry throughout uh, nations. And I guess the the English ship has two smaller tubs, or the English whale, whale boats do, yeah. which he says is a little more convenient, right? Um, so. There it is. Any other questions about how this works? It's very technical. Like, I'm sure you didn't, you would never, why would you do this, by the way? Anybody, a fisherman, or why in the world would you have the line first wrap around this loggerhead rather than just, like, go straight out in front? Mm -hmm. so if you lose it, if it doesn't go into the whale. No, because if it just goes straight up, people are sitting there, right? Yeah. No, no, but why doesn't it just go, like, straight from here to here? It needs a little zip tape. Yeah, it needs friction. You guys ever, any of you guys fishermen? I fish. If, if you're a fisher, if you're a fisherman, you know how like on your reel is a drag setting. You guys know what I'm talking yeah, about or not? Yeah. Like you can set the drag on your fishing reel so that it's harder or less hard for the fish to oh, drag yeah. the line out. What do you want to do at first? You want the fish to just run, right? Why? So tired, tired, tired out. And if you remember in chapter 61, a stub takes a couple of more turns on this thing. Basically, he realized the whale's getting more tired, and so they don't have to just let it. Uh, fly so quickly, right? That's the, the wet it's and remember, like it's smoking, yeah. it's going out so fast, and he puts hats full of water on to keep it from getting too hot, right? So that's a, a, a interesting little detail about the industry that I'm sure none of us knew, right? And again, this industry doesn't exist anymore. This is like a documentary. Like who knew this, right? So Ishmael's explaining this to us. But what I think is as important, if not maybe more important, is the last part of this chapter. So let's all turn to that page where Ishmael is going to go to an entirely different place, which has nothing to do with whale lines at all, except figuratively, or them as a symbol of something. So everybody turn to, uh, what is that page? Um, 254. 254. Okay, I want to read a little bit with you. By the way, how many of you guys are real eagle eyes? Did anybody see the word... All right, let's let's do a little quiz here. All right, what is this? Is the handle of the the oar? You guys remember what this was called? The handle of the oar. It's called. 
Not the Mazeppa. Loom. Loom. Whoa. It's called the loom. The loom. <laughs> did you did you notice this? You've got these lines like this. And then what have you got? You got all this rope it's weaving weird. back, and it just happens that one of the parts is called a loom too. Which has something to do with fate and life, right? The direction and duration of your life. Now, let's look at the very end. So read along with me. So you'll see I'm not making this stuff up. Okay. Um, can you find this, this line where he says, but why say more? It's about halfway through that last paragraph. But why say more? You see that? Wait, we're on chapter... We're on page 254, chapter 60, last like eight lines. Okay, here we go. So he's explaining all this to us. He's explaining that, you know, it's ex extremely dangerous. And it's actually kind of scary just to look at the line because you know that in any, at any moment it could, like, snap into action. And it, also, think about this for a minute. Where is the front of this boat? It's this way, right? Yeah. But if you're, I don't know if you, how many of you guys know how to row boats, but, like, when you're rowing, which way do you face? Backwards. You face this way, right? So you row like this, yeah. yes? So what does that mean about your knowledge of when the whaleman or the harpooner is going to strike the harpoon? You, uh, you, you, you don't know, right? So you're pulling like the devil, and you have no idea when this line that's wrapping around and bumping your wrists every moment is going to be in full play with a 20-ton whale on the other end, yeah. right? So with that in mind, let's read this. But why say more? Are you with me? But why say more? All men live enveloped in whale lines. All men are born with halters around their necks. But it is only when caught in these swift, sudden turns of death that mortals realize the silent, subtle, ever-present perils of life. And if you would be a, philo if you would be a philosopher... Though seated in the whale boat, you would not at heart feel one whit more of terror than those seated before your evening fire with a poker, and not a harpoon by your side. All right, so nice, huh? In the end, in the end, we're like whaling is just a metaphor, right? Line is a metaphor. You with me? Now let's do this for a minute. What does he mean? Somebody answer this question. What does he mean by this line? Oh yeah, is there any questions in about, uh, yeah? What's the, what are they talking about when they say halter? All men are born with halters around their necks. What's a halter? Do you guys know? Like a, it's like a, a, a noose. A noose. Oh. He means that. Like a noose. Okay. Everyone's born with a noose around their necks. Now this can't be literally true, right? Yeah. We're not literally surrounded by whale lines. But... What is the whale line, like, think about this now, abstracted. What is the whale line to the whaleman in this boat? It is a, a no, thing no, that no. doesn't look dangerous, right? Yeah. Yeah. But could, could at any moment kill, them. kill you, yeah. right? Yeah. At any moment. So what does it mean that we are enveloped, like these guys are enveloped by whale lines, that we are born with halters around our necks? What do you think about that? We're all subject Speak to, to the camera. We are all subject to death. We're all, but... But, okay, work that a little bit more. What, it, what are the whale lines? What is the whale line? You could die at any moment. From like what? Anything. Danger. Any like, like, general. General. Chant, like Do these things, does this line seem they, dangerous when the whale's nowhere near no. you? No. no. No, not at all. But when do you realize, like, oh my gosh, I'm surrounded by danger? When the whale, when the whale, when the whale is, is Exactly. Now, 